Since children don't make good scriptwriters, every show that has ever been intended for a younger audience was written by adults. Whether it's from the tedious nature of the job or to make their co-workers laugh, inappropriate humor has always been discreetly placed in kids' entertainment since they started making it. Some are obvious, smacking you in the face with its suggestiveness. Others are subtle, only intended to be caught upon multiple viewings or maybe not at all. How these jokes got past the censors, we're not sure. One thing is for certain though, as we got older, watching the television shows or movies we enjoyed as children is usually an eye-opening and sometimes cheek-blushing experience. Strap in and put the earmuffs and blindfolds on the kitties. It's time for 10 hidden adult jokes in popular movies and TV shows. Animaniacs. Not many shows intended for children push the boundaries more than Animaniacs, which aired during the late 90s. The Warner siblings, better known as Yakko, Wacko, and Dot, lived on the Warner Brothers lot, creating havoc through a variety of animated skits. While the show was created for a younger audience, it featured parodies of adult movies, including The Godfather. Still, we're unsure of how everyone missed this moment from the first season. The episode, Hercule Yakko, is a parody of Agatha Christie and finds the Warners leaving no stone or superstar turn to solve their mystery. No, your ears aren't deceiving you. Dot just declined to put one of her four digits inside the artist formerly known as Prince. After 100 episodes, the show ended in 1998, so we'll never know how they intended to party like it was 1999. Rugrats. On Rugrats, the adults are not able to understand the toddlers. The main stars of the show, Tommy Pickles, his brother Dill, and his buddies Chucky, Phil, and Lil, all spoke in quote-unquote baby talk, but understood each other perfectly. During the episode Grandpa's Date, the youngsters probably wished they couldn't hear the adults. Tommy and Chucky are sleeping over at Grandpa Pickles' house while the parents get a night off. Once they leave, Grandpa takes out his video collection, including one that he should have left hidden in the underwear drawer. He lists off the titles for the kids, movies about their favorite dinosaur reptar. Then, in a cringeworthy moment holds up a box for a movie picturing alien ladies in bikinis called Lonely Space Vixens. Fear not, he wasn't going to show the kids, as he casually remarks. That's for later tonight. The Angry Birds Movie When you're making a movie based off an app, it's going to take a lot of hard work to get people to the theater. While the movie enjoys several instances of wordplay with flock and pluck, it also finds time to hit below the belt. As our hero bird Red, voiced by Jason Sudeikis, works through his anger issues and begins to become the leader he was born to be, he finds himself needing to get his additional avufana motivated. So he informs them to quote unquote drop their nuts, which is followed by a quick shot of birds eating actual nuts, a standard trick used by animators to cover up a sly slip in. Just show a literal meaning of the risque words and you're safe. Maybe they intended to slingshot that joke over our head, but audiences didn't miss it. Justice League Unlimited If you're between the ages of 12 and, say, alive, you've probably wondered about the performing prowess of your favorite superhero. Director Kevin Smith echoed many local comic book store conversations in Mallrats when main character Brody discusses the possibility of Superman copulating and how the Fantastic Four's powers affected their manhood. It's no wonder the writers of Justice League Unlimited couldn't pass up an easy joke on how fast the Flash is at fornicating. Barry Allen is a quick talker and never one to pass up reminding people he is the fastest man alive. During the episode Injustice for All, Hawkgirl questions questions if the Flash's speed in the bedroom is the reason he is having trouble with the ladies. Ouch. Robots. Explaining the birds and bees is a rite of passage for any parent. The fine folk at Blue Sky Studios tried to help with their feature film, Robots, by giving us the nuts and bolts on newborns. The opening scene of the film shows Herb and Lydia Copperbottom making a baby. No, they're not grinding gears on screen. They're literally constructing a baby from their quote-unquote build-a-baby kit. Still, the way Lydia aggressively reminds her husband that making the baby is the fun part, we're pretty sure she's not talking about building a Lego Technic set. After a couple minutes, they're finally done. But this scene has one more bit of innuendo left. As they coddle the baby, they notice a missing part, which happens to be its robotic penis, which needs circumcised with a sledgehammer? <sighs> and people worry about robots taking over the planet. Ratatouille. In 2007, Buena Vista Pictures and Pixar Studios brought the word ratatouille to the mainstream, telling the story of lousy sous chef Alfredo Linguini and his little chef, an easy joke repeated throughout the movie. During the film, Alfredo learns the secrets to French cuisine from a rat he keeps in his hat. Health board violations aside, after referring to the rat as quote unquote little chef to most of the characters, Linguini finally has to confess his rodent assistant culinary skills to the woman of his dreams. Seizing the moment, the animators use Use this scene to really pound the wordplay home. As Alfred struggles to tell Colette his secret, he trips over his own words, which could be seen as a sweet gesture of embarrassment. However, every adult knows that Colette thinks his spatula is a little on the small side. 
SpongeBob SquarePants. Not since Bert and Ernie have two cartoon characters had a bromance like SpongeBob SquarePants and Patrick Starfish in a show filled to the brim with overt reference and a barrage of adult tinged humor. The Krusty Krab and Bikini Bottom, anyone? One moment seemed to push the envelope a tad too far. The first episode of season two, Your Shoes Untied, opens with SpongeBob home alone watching a sea anemone swirling around on his television. As some light jazz plays, he appears transfixed until Gary crawls into the room. When our favorite sponge, who lives in a pineapple under the sea, realizes he's not alone, he quickly changes the channel to USFL football game, which begs the question, which is worse, SpongeBob watching porn or Bikini Bottom's awful sports channels? The Flintstones. The Flintstones was the first animated primetime television series, yet it actually wasn't a children's show. However, it debuted in the 1960s, a stoic time in American culture when most adults would not even think about watching a cartoon. Then again, this was also the only cartoon character to hawk cigarettes in commercials. Since they figured not too many grown-ups would be watching, or at least expecting any tomfoolery, the writers of this show weren't very subtle. Take this moment from the show's second season. Barney Rubble and Fred Flintstone are shopping for costumes and Barney wants one that makes him taller. After Fred drops a pretty lame burn about needing another head, Barney doesn't hesitate and makes a rock-solid reference to his third head. Yabba dabba awkward. The Brave Little Toaster comes to the rescue. What started out as an innocent book for children, written by Thomas Dish in 1980, was turned into hardcore computer action by 1999. The final movie in the Brave Little Toaster series sees our toaster hero and his appliance friends in a convoluted tale involving computer viruses and black market animal trading. Near the end of the movie, an old computer is turned on, and by turned on, we mean till completion, literally. The computer has its memory stroked by an expert, and then, before he bursts, he starts spitting out white paper. How this scene made it past, well, anyone, is shocking to us. After making a computer spray his ones and zeros everywhere, we see why this franchise became toast. Hocus Pocus. Every year around Halloween, families gather around to watch Hocus Pocus, a family-friendly spooky story about three witches brought back to life by a young man who happens to be a virgin. While some adult jokes in kids' movies are humorous, this one's downright scary. During the battle, the witches are forced to take public transportation, which happens to have the sleaziest bus ever. Throughout the bus ride, our determined driver does not give up hitting on the women, even having Sarah Jessica Parker sit on his lap and drive the bus, as he enjoys every speed bump they come across. If this action wasn't creepy enough, it also seems the bus driver keeps tab on the local children in the neighborhood. While we're pretty sure the reference is to the driver's ability to procreate, given his lecherous attitude, we're not entirely sure. When you sit down to watch a show with your kids, you were hoping you don't have to cover their eyes to avoid all the potty humor. The good news, the kids rarely get the jokes, and they help keep the grown-ups entertained. Did we mention your favorite dirty joke? Let us know which ones we missed and which ones we should cover next time. If you like this video and want to see more, subscribe to our channel. Give Give this video a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Be sure to leave a comment telling us your favorite joke meant for adults in kids shows.